My name is Richard Reed Perry. I am a musician and a composer, and this is Music for Heart and Breath. Music for Heart and Breath is my compositional debut record. It's a collection of pieces that I wrote, all of them with the exact same idea behind them. Um, and the idea is that every single note that is played is played in sync with either the breathing or the heartbeat of the musician who's playing it. Here you have some musicians, um, various types of instruments playing various types of things. Now, everybody here that you see is currently, whether you can see it or not, wearing a stethoscope under their clothes, or sort of half under their clothes and half on top of their clothes, um, and under that, a bandage to press said stethoscope against the heart of the individual. The original idea for Music for Heart and Breath came from listening to a bunch of music that I just couldn't relate to in any kind of physical way when I was in school, and I was listening to electroacoustic music and studying electroacoustic music and just feeling nothing from so much of it. One day, sitting at my desk, I just thought, what would be the opposite of this music? What would be the most connected to our bodies that music could be? What would be the music that seems like it comes completely from within? And then I just thought about, well, what about having a kind of music where the, the involuntary parts of your body were involved in the making of the music, so the involuntary things, the speed of your breathing, your blinking, your heart beating, these things that go on in your body whether you're telling your body to do them or not. At the time I was getting quite excited about the music of John Cage, and I was getting quite excited about the music of um, Brian Eno, his sort of early tape experiments and ambient music, and getting really excited about Steve Reich and these ideas of relinquishing control over music, so setting up systems that would generate music over time. John Cage was excited about having chance operations in music and introducing this hu like huge compositional elements of a piece being completely out of the hands of the performer and certain things being in the hands of the performer. And I really liked those ideas. And I really like those in the context of classical music and classical musicians who, are, who have such incredible control over their instruments and over their métier and are able to you know, achieve a real purity of sound and of musical quality out of their performing, but then introducing something into the mix, some chaos, and makes them have to let go of some of their control. And so it becomes, this, it becomes a little bit looser, a little bit rougher around the edges. I actually, what I wanted was the performance to feel slightly interfered with by an impulse and by an intuition that is deeper than the musical training of the people playing it. I started writing this music in the middle of um, the first and biggest and craziest long rock tour um, that the Arcade Fire ever did in 2004 and 2005. Being in this environment of constantly moving, constantly going from one place to another, constantly performing to thousands and thousands of people, I just wanted to write some music that was the extreme opposite of that. And it was this extremely intimate, extremely quiet, extremely gentle experience for both me writing it and for the listener listening to it and for the musician playing it, where all they had to pay attention to was the quietest little impulses and the quietest little sounds and the delicate little rhythms going on inside of their bodies and translating that into music. Everybody generally is wearing a stethoscope while they're playing the music and they wear a stethoscope so that they can hear their own heartbeat while they are playing. It's a big pain in the butt. <laughs> um, it's, it is extremely awkward for the musicians at first, but uh, everybody that I've worked with so far has been an extremely good sport about it. The first ensemble that I got to write a Music for Heart and Breath piece for were the Kronos Quartet, who are the preeminent string quartet of the century. It was amazing to hear them bringing to life this idea in more of a contrapuntal, pointillistic kind of way where you have multiple heartbeats bouncing and you have multiple breathing melodies overlapping. My music are a fantastic sort of new music, no holds barred, take no prisoners, um, sextet. 
they were sort of the resident ensemble for much of this record. And then I did the orchestra piece after that. Oh yeah, at 20, at 28. Yeah, so again, so, 20, so 28 is going to be like, huh? Music being really soft and kind of like... Yeah, 20 is going to be one, two, one, two, right, so you're coming on two. Yeah. Nico right. Muley, right. my dear friend, conducted that so piece, you, uh, which next, was great. And he was actually involved in getting that piece commissioned in the first place. He said, do you want to write for orchestra? And I said, will the orchestra be fine with where, you know, all 48 members of the orchestra be fine with wearing stethoscopes? Because if so, yes, because <laughs> that's what I want to do right now. I wrote the Nanette for Heart and Breath, the interruptions for Heart and Breath, for Y Music, and for myself to play double bass, and for Aaron and Bryce Dessner, who I've worked with over the years in the context of uh, their band The National, and Bryce in the context of many different things, including uh, his festival Music Now, which is my favorite festival anywhere. I naturally asked Bryce if he wanted to come on board and produce this record with me, which he agreed to. Nadia Sirota is this incredible violist who has been involved from the almost from the get-go in this process of writing all this music and performing all this music. And, and just is generally one of my favorite musicians ever. Yeah, just a fantastic, fantastic player. It's incredible that the musical world that I inhabit gets to collide with the kind of longer tradition of classical music. I think there's something quite beautiful about the idea of trying to literally play your heart out.